What would you do if you found the man or woman of your dreams while on vacation? What if you found out that she was cursed by a terrible ancient curse? Oh, with the way things have been going for a lot of people, I imagine that wouldn't be enough to really stop them. Finding a partner that's cursed seems like a relief compared to half of everyone's love life. This is 2018's Hex. Spoiler alert, while I might be giving you my opinion on the film, that's no substitute for watching it for yourself. Links to the film are in the description. And for those of you that need to hear this, this is just a movie. All stunts are for the sake of story and shouldn't be attempted on your own. No animals were harmed in the making of this film. Viewer discretion is advised. We get a nice view of a beach. And we meet Ben and Isaac who are enjoying a friendly game of chess. Ben grabs the last beer as Isaac contemplates his next move. And we find out that Ben just got here from his father's funeral. After one more move, Ben puts him in checkmate. And as Isaac sets up for another game, Ben notices Amber as she walks by. Isaac jokes that Ben could never pull a girl like her, and he immediately takes that bet. Amber runs into a local who talks her into going on a tour with him, but Ben catches up to try and tell her that she shouldn't just trust the random locals. To top that off, he tells her that she should come with him for a drink, but she sees right through his game. When you warn someone not to go with some random guy that seems genuinely nice, you should probably make sure that you're just not another random guy to her when you ask her out. That's like a serial killer warning a victim away from another killer so he can be the one to add them to their tally instead. That night, Ben and Isaac head to Charlie's bar, and Amber pops up all of a sudden. This time, Isaac tries to put some moves on her, but she's focused on Ben. She offers to buy him a drink, and he can't resist the offer. The two of them walk down the beach, and she tells him about how she comes here all the time to people watch. After getting a drink, Ben asks Amber out, and she agrees to dinner the next night. Amber shows him how to crack open a crab and eat it, and by the end of the night, Amber thanks him for a wonderful night as they walk through the jungle. He goes in for a kiss, but a stranger walks by and disturbs them? That's not enough to stop me from getting a kiss. If we're dedicated to the motion of getting a good night kiss, it's gonna take more than one random bearded dude to come between us. Amber invites Ben back to her room, and she leaves him with some ancient ritual decorations so she can get into something more comfortable. She doesn't disappoint. She comes out in very comfortable underwear, but then she goes back and comes back in a bathrobe instead. W why the tease? She pops up naked, then puts a robe on, then lies in bed kissing him, then tells him not to rush. Ugh, I'm getting whiplash from this whole interaction. When Ben goes to leave, he thinks that he might have said something wrong, but Amber assures him that everything's okay. The next day, Ben, Isaac, and Dan head out in kayaks, and when they get back in town, Ben goes off on his own to look around town. Meanwhile, a man shows up and calls out to Amber who's nearby. He talks about how she played him the night before, and he tries to take her away. Ben shows up just in time to play hero, and they end up getting chased through town by the man after he grabs a machete. Amber pulls Ben into an abandoned house, and she decides to go down on him until the drunk man goes away. After this is all done, Ben goes back to his brother and tells him that he's going to be staying for a few more days. I'd be inspired to stay too. Dan doesn't think that Ben should stay behind on his own, but Ben tells him that he knows what he's doing. Isaac and Dan take a boat to the next part of their vacation, and Ben heads back to see Amber. As he walks down the path, he feels like something is lurking in the forest, but he can't see anyone. That night they go to a rave and enjoy the local nightlife. While they dance around, Amber spots the stalker again, and she tells Ben she's going to the bathroom. She leaves Ben her phone, and he starts to scroll through her pictures. Eventually, he comes across some risque pictures, and the world starts to spin around him. He tries to climb the stairs to the bathroom, but he passes out. When he comes to, he stumbles to the bathroom to try and find Amber, but he finds the stalker with some of his friends instead. This dude can't win. If he doesn't see that Amber is bad news after this, then it's his own fault. All of the signs are right there. Just then, Amber shows up dressed completely different, and she seems to throw the guys around with her mind. Now she's like the ultimate red flag, or the ultimate dream crush depending on who you ask, I guess. After the stalker runs out scared, Ben passes back out, and he comes to the next morning while someone walks around picking up all the trash. We see the stalker back in town, and he pulls a gun out of his glove compartment. Meanwhile, Amber is back in her room, and something is making her pop out of her shirt. She's alone in the room, or at least that's what it looks like to us. The stalker is locked in his car, and Amber's being controlled by a force that seems to be pulling her up and down. The stalker gets choked with his seatbelt, 
and Amber seems to sense something similar. Within seconds, the stalker is dead, and a cop comes across the car. Ben also makes it into town, and he comes across the body as well. After that, he rushes over to check on Amber, and she tells him that she's fine. Then he tells her about how he was jumped at the party, and the stalker being dead, and she tells him to crash at his place. At this point, he's better off jumping in a boat and catching up with his brothers. Things are just a little too coincidental for my liking. And Amber has grabbing bruises that she won't say where they're from? Who spiked his drink the night before? Nothing makes sense right now. The more he pries, the more Amber says that no one did this to her. She blames it on epilepsy, and she tells him that she's being pressured to have some sort of neurosurgery back in Boston. She tries to tell him that this is his ticket out to get away, but he decides to stay. That was not epilepsy. He probably should have taken that ticket out of there. The two of them head outside, and Amber notices an altar. After she looks at it, she gets a weird vision of a bloody ritual, and Ben has to bring her back to reality. The two of them head to a local drugstore, but the woman there tells them that they have to see the doctor. When the doctor comes out, Amber tells him that Ben is a friend of hers, and he makes an ointment for Ben. After Amber gets scared by a dead Tokei gecko, the doctor tries to warn Ben that a dead man's spirit follows him. He gives Ben a powder that he says Amber must drink, and Ben goes on his way. That night, Ben and Amber go for a swim, but they start to spit up a lot of blood. It ends up just being a dream, and Ben calls Amber back to bed. Um, no, after a dream like that, I think that bed is the last place I want to be. Ben heads over to Amber and they share a nice kiss before she gets spooked by another vision. Ben goes to make them tea, and he's joined by who he thinks is Amber. When he turns around, there's no one there though. The tea kettle steam reveals a hidden message on the mirror that tells him to get out, and he puts the concoction from the doctor in Amber's tea. She drinks it down, and immediately she falls to the ground and convulses. Ben thinks that he's killed her, and he runs back to the doctor in the middle of the night. He brings the doctor back with him, and they find Amber sitting on the bed. Instead of using his basic survival skills, Ben tries to reach out to Amber instead. The doctor calls out that there's an evil spirit at work here, but Ben still won't believe him. Soon Amber starts convulsing again, and the doctor and assistant try to restrain her. Amber breaks loose and sits up. The doctor catches that the spirit's name is Diona, and he starts making Amber's arms with symbols. Ben stops the doctor and tells him that it's just Amber's epilepsy, but Amber grabs a hold of him and starts choking him. Once he breaks free, the doctor comes at him with a knife and tells him that they need this blood. Well, Ben's had enough of this, and he kicks the two of them out. Ben turns his attention to Amber, and he takes her to the bath to clean her up. He asks her if she remembers anything that happened, but she assures him that she just remembers everything from after the doctor was kicked out. Lies! Lies! During their bath, Ben notices a scar on her side, and she tells him that she was a conjoined twin. After the surgery, her sister didn't make it. Her sister's name was Diona. That's not even a common name. I've never met someone named that in my life. It's too convenient. But what does Ben do next? Goes back to bed. Apparently, he sleeps all his troubles away. Ben wakes up and finds Amber burning a bunch of things outside, and he goes back to bed. While he dreams, he finds himself back in the party building when he got jumped, and he can sense two different versions of Amber coming to him. We assume that one of them is Diona, and they both ask Ben to join them. When Ben wakes up, he finds Amber sitting over him with a creepy smile, and she tells him that she's just watching him snore. Then she starts kissing on him and doing all sorts of stuff to get into Rise and Shine. The two of them wind up on the beach, and Amber lights up a joint before passing it to him. Amber notices that something's off with Ben, and she asks him to open up to her. He tells her that he's worried about her roommate that he's never met and she tells him that she must have picked up her stuff in the middle of the night. No, it was all of the stuff that she was burning the other night. I can't tell if Amber realizes all of these things, or if this Diona spirit takes over without her knowing. Either way, she's still lying. Ben asks some more questions about her roommate, and Amber tells them that they had a falling out. In a flashback, we see that Amber actually killed her roommate using some sort of magic. He calls her out on some of the lies, and Amber tries to blow it all off and move on to a more physical action. Ben isn't having it though. He shows her the pictures he saw on her phone, and she immediately goes on the defensive. Ben tells her that she should go back to Boston to get her treatment, and he'll join his brothers. This doesn't sit well with Amber, and she throws out some dirty details that make him jealous. Ben walks off, and Amber breaks down on the beach. Further down the beach, Ben calls his brother, 
and he finds out that they're back in town. He goes to meet them that night at the bar, and they try to talk him into just getting with the local girls instead. Across town, we see that Amber is definitely sharing her body with Diona, and we see her dump a body in the water. Dan tries to introduce Ben to one of the local girls, and she tries to make him feel a little better. Ben isn't about that though, and she assures him that it's fine he doesn't want to. Ben goes and wanders the beach alone, but then he gets a video of Amber that's of her opening up about the other side of her mind. Worried about Amber, Ben rushes to her house to find that she's lying unconscious in the bathtub. He gets her to throw up the pill she took, and he ends up staying with her. Leave it to Ben to say like nothing ever happened. Not to mention they're talking like they've been together for years. It's been what, four or five days? And he slept most of it. The next day, Ben drives Amber to a mysterious doctor that says he can help, and they follow him into a creepy cave where he does his work. Ben stands to the side and voices his opinion on what he really thinks about all this. The witch doctor starts off with Diona's name, and the environment around them starts to react as the entity rages. Amber asks him if he can get rid of her, and the doctor has his assistants come in to cleanse Amber. The assistants wrap Amber in a cloth, and they offer her some sort of drink. If the show we got last time the doctor gave her something is anything to warn us, we should know that we're in for a trippy show. The only difference is that Ben is definitely expecting something unpleasant now. The doctor has Ben dress up in grass clothing and tells him that he'll be the most important part of the ceremony. Amber's led to a sacred section of the cave, and they tie her in the circle. The doctor tells Ben to watch over her until daybreak. Then they bring out a goat. Why is it always a goat? He tells him the usual ritual practice of trapping the demon in the goat to kill it. But why is it always a goat? I feel like goat should be put on the endangered species list after all the rituals in the world. They leave the two of them in the middle of the cave, and they just wait now. So much for it being a long night. Amber immediately tries to get Ben to untie her, and when he doesn't, Diona starts messing with him. He's supposed to keep watch all night and the demon can't even wait five minutes. After Ben actually stands his ground and doesn't release her, he starts to see the physical manifestation of Diona, and he's a believer now. Diona takes over Amber's body, and she tries to toy with Ben's emotions. When Ben goes to the goat, he threatens to go through with the ritual, but Amber tries to tell him that it's all over. Ben actually falls for it this time, and the second that he cuts one of her hands free, Diona shows herself. She tries to play Ben's fantasy, and she offers herself up to Ben before the demon finally separates from Amber's body. For this being a low-budget indie movie, the demon here looks pretty cool. I'm happy with this. Ben tries to ward off Diona, but she proves to be too powerful. So Amber takes the knife and goes to slit her own throat. In the process, Diona goes into Ben, and Amber knocks him out. When Ben comes to, he finds himself hanging upside down in the cave, and Amber tells him that it's all over. She walks away and leaves him bound, and a man shows up to slice him in half. As he bleeds out, Ben notices all the signs that he missed before, and he sees that Amber set him up the entire time. Ben is probably the dumbest character I've seen in a long time. He not only got played, but he got possessed by the demon he was trying to slay and got played. Amber, on the other hand, is assured by the witch doctor and the regular doctor that she's free from Diona for good now. But hey, the goat survived. Can't tell if Amber or Diona was actually the evil being, though. Then, the credits roll. For an indie movie I'd never heard of, it was pleasantly well done. Aside from Ben being a gullible, dumb protagonist, he meant well. Give it a shot. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next, and I'll see you in the next video.